Hi, and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Jeremiah, and thank you for stopping by as we get into the Word of God. Let's go into Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 1 through 3. And the title is very simple, The Increase of Corruption. And it's saying here, In time, when men began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive. And they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Adonai said, My spirit will not live in human beings forever, or with, or upon. For they too are flesh, and therefore their lifespan is to be 120 years. Well, think about this. In the time of a generation that was totally corrupt, totally depraved of God's laws and God's goodness, what happened? Only one man was found righteous in his time and his generation. And yet God told them, you have 120 years. We know that it took at least 120 years to build the ark. And no one knew exactly what he was doing because God had given him all the dimensions, gave him everything he needed to do the work of the ministry. From the time of Adam all the way to Noah, God preserved a holy heritage. But when it came to the time of Noah, which was about 1656 year BC, that the flood came and destroyed the world. But yet in his time, he was the only righteous man in his generation. He found favor with the Lord, even though he was in a wicked and depraved generation. But something happened and he saw it. It says the sons of God took daughters now, a lot of people confuse this. They try to say that these sons of gods were fallen angels, but there's only one problem with that. Logically, angels cannot uh, procreate. They don't have any seed to procreate. These were not fallen angels, but they were sons of gods. From the line of Seth, that was the son that was given to Adam after his son, Abel, got killed by Cain. And that whole line was kept holy but something happened in the, in the time of Noah where they became corrupt and they began to mingle with the world. This is the most awful thing that in the eyes of God can happen. When the righteous starts to mingle with the unrighteous, that's where it really hits, well, as they say, the rubber hits the road. And we're seeing this, we're seeing churches being married to things of the world married to philosophies and doctrines of the world. There was one church actually that took in a religion that uh, shared their temple so that they can have a place to worship and the other religion that went in told them we cannot worship here unless you take the cross from the top of the building. The pastor said it was okay and they celebrated by bringing a, uh, a crane to take the cross off the top of the building. Thus you have the marriage of two different religions in one temple. You know, Paul says something that was interesting. He said this, and I want to just quote it right now. Paul tells us in, give me a second, I'm getting here right here, okay. He tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15, he says, don't you know that your bodies are the parts of the Messiah. So, am I to take parts of the Messiah's part of the body and unite it with a prostitute? Heaven forbid. In other words, he also said, what does Baal and the Lord have to do with one another? He said, what does light and darkness have to do with one another? There's only one way to stop the corruption, and that is to continually stay in the Word of God and the doctrines of Christ. I learned one thing about sin. Sin has no power until you mix it with something. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of the, of the, of the knowledge of good and evil were in the same garden. And God told Adam and Eve, don't eat from this tree. Now think about this for a moment. It was there. Don't touch it. 
The moment we see sin and we start to put our passions and our emotions and our desires, our curiosity to go toward it, is when we fall, is when the mixture happens. And there's only one way I've learned to keep ourselves pure, undefiled from the things of this world, and that is to stay close to God, both in worship, in prayer, and in the Word of God. Remember, sin has no power until you mix it. That's our problem. We see something, our desires begin to go after it. Even, even James says, why do we fight so much? He says, isn't it because you want to get what you want? Isn't it a lust inside of us that wants to get what we want? But the moment we do that, we start to mix our feelings. And sooner or later, our love for God and our desire for God is a little lesson because our passion for the sin has become greater. This is exactly what Eve saw. She saw that the tree was good for food. But prior to this, it was the serpent speaking to her mind and putting a question mark where there should have been a period. He put a question mark into the veracity of God's word in her mind, given to her by her husband, don't eat from this tree. But the moment that Satan said, well, you know, you're not going to die. She said, I'm going to die. If we eat from this tree, the day we do, we're going to die. He said, you're not going to die. God knows that the day you eat from this tree, you're going to be like him knowing what's right and wrong. Mm. Be like God? That was the whole thing about it. And she saw that the tree was good. He put a question mark where there should have been a period. God said, don't do it. Period. And that's how we stay on the file. Read the word of God. Stay there. Don't move. Do you not know that if a man joins himself with a prostitute, he becomes physically one with her? For the word of God tells us in the Old Testament, the two shall become one. Don't marry anything outside that is the will of God. And you will stay pure and away from the corruption of this world. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day.